Hey everybody, I'm Ted Pommes. This is a CodeFling tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to give you a broad overview of what you can do and what you can expect from Rust Edit. To get started, I'm going to click on Create New. I'm going to change the size to 3000 to give the editor a little bit more space to place everything, leave everything default and click on Create. Once we are in, I'm just quickly going to go to Tools, Procedural Tools, Native, and then click on All. I want to give you a broad overview and if certain things are unclear or you're not familiar with certain terms that I'm using, don't worry, I will say this once. In upcoming videos, we're going to be diving into all of those topics. And here we have our map. If I press G, like in-game, we get the map. This is what the editor created just by clicking Generate All. And if you don't like this map and you want to edit something else, you can just go to Tools, Procedural Tools, Native, and click on All again. This will delete everything you have. So if you do want to keep some sort of changes, this is not the way to go. If you want to generate a totally new map, you can do this again. Do this till you find something that you like and start making your edits that way. Of course, if you want to, you can start with a totally empty map and start from scratch. If you're new to editing, I would recommend letting the editor generate a map like I'm doing here or otherwise open up a map from your client or from your server. It generated a new map. It clearly didn't go well. So I would recommend just regenerating a new one. But for this example, I'm going to accept it and just work with this. Looking at the menu, I'm mainly going to skip the options on the left. I think some of them can be quite confusing if you're totally new to map making. I do quickly want to point out a few things here on the left. Under help and then help again. There's a pretty in-depth help system. For example, clicking on controls, you can see all the controls and things you can do. So if you're looking for help or you're looking for something that I didn't cover yet in this video or in upcoming videos, go here first and see if you can find your answer. Under edit, you can edit your preferences. This is also where you change your controls. So if you want to change something or you just want to look up what the controls are, or if you're having performance issues or you think you can maybe set the performance a little bit higher than what it currently is, this is also where you go to change those settings. I'm going to skip over sockets for now. Inside of Rust Edit, you can create paths, you can create roads, rivers, a APC path, which is the tank or Bradley. You can also make your own custom paths for the cargo ship around the island. So if you have an island or map, whatever you want to call it, in a specific shape, you can make sure that the cargo ship actually follows the contours of the island. On the prefabs, we have our prefab list. This is everything that we can use inside of the editor. And this is also, for example, where you will find all of the monuments. You can just drag them in and everything in game will work as you expect it. Of course, the oil rig should be in the water, but that aside. <laughs> a lot of these prefabs also have certain modifiers attached to them. So I can really quickly, and I will go more in depth in this into upcoming videos, but just to demonstrate how powerful Rust Edit is, you can really quickly apply the height, apply the textures or splat, the biome, the alpha, which is all the holes and stuff like that, the topology. And this way you just added your own monument on the location that you wanted. And it's super simple. And now you could still go in and make changes how you want to. In case of red towns like this, you cannot change the individual things inside of the red town. So if I wanted to delete this tower, I can't. Inside of Rust Edit, all the actual monuments are treated as one object. I can add stuff. So if I search for tower, I can, for example, find the watchtower A and I could put a second one next to it and change it however I want to, but I am not able to take one of these items and for example, change it or delete it. I hope that makes sense. In upcoming videos, I will explain this more. So inside our prefab list, we can find all the prefabs we can use, see what we like, click to select them, see if we like it. And if you want to use it, we can then drag it into our map. If it has any modifiers, we can apply it. Once we have a prefab selected, we get this transform tool. And this is where we can also do a lot of things, rotate it and change it using the on-screen axis, or we can manually type in numbers and change it that way. After the prefabs, we have the terrain painter. This is basically what it says. After you shaped your mountains and terrain however you want it, you then can paint stuff on it. So you can do the splat, which is the textures. So let's go somewhere where we can actually see that. And I can select what I want to do. So for example, snow, and I can just paint it on. And this is the same for the biome. Don't worry if you don't know what the biome is or what it does. I will explain this, of course, in upcoming videos. The topology basically dictates what happens, what spawns where, etc. And then lastly, we have the terrain tool, which allows us to actually shape the terrain. In this case, this was all generated by the editor, but you can already see a, a preview. 
I have several brushes and several effects and things I can do. For example, raise and lower. I can change the size of the brush and also how strong it is with the opacity. And then if I hold and click, you can see that I can shape the terrain. It says hold alt to invert. So if I hold alt, it goes in. And if I normally click, it goes up. And this way you can shape your terrain exactly how you want it and make changes. Use any of the tools, for example, the smooth tool to then smooth everything out. So combination of the terrain tool, terrain painter, and all the prefabs, you can really take control of the shape and the layout of your map. Rust Edit is a really powerful program if you know how to use it. It has its limitations, but if you are creative, there is a lot of things that you can do and a lot of custom things that you can make. Having a custom map or understanding how to work with custom maps really is a vital part of hosting Rust servers. There's a lot of things that I didn't touch on and I almost kept everything here on the left on purpose. I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information in one video. Hopefully this was helpful though. I hope to see you in the next video. As always, thank you for watching and good luck with your custom map.